Hello, everyone. All right. So I think we are ready to get started. So this is Pioneer, a strategic change in content organization with Plone. Um, so who am I? Uh, my name is Clayton Parker. I am the uh, director of development at Six Feet Up, um, known as Claytron throughout the internets. Um, uh, putting the microphone much closer to my face for Godfrey. There you are. Um, and I will speak slowly, I promise. Um, so uh, I've been doing Plone since 2003, uh, doing Plone 2.0. 2 um, so I've seen a, a lot of the history of, of Plone happen. Um, and we have been working with a few products that maybe you've heard of. So today, we're going to be talking about Lineage. So how many people have actually used Lineage in the room? OK, so only a few. OK, excellent. You are the perfect audience for this talk, then. Um, so Lineage is a, an add-on product for Plone. Um, and it's something we have developed at Six Feet Up. We have used it in many sites. Um, and, and it's really become part of our kind of tool belts. So, so why would you want to use Lineage? Um, there's many, many applications for Lineage. Uh, the, the most obvious choice is a subsite. So you have, you have a main site, or you have a, a, a series of sites you want to deploy. Um, you may use Lineage for that. Um, you may have a product um, that you're deploying into your, into your site. Uh, you might use it for that. Uh, you might have a conference. There's there's a, a myriad of reasons you might use Lineage. Um, Lineage has become uh, sort of a mainstay for us because we can easily create many small sites without the overhead of having to deal with many different clone sites. Um, most recently, we have uh, developed some Lineage sites for uh, the University of Notre Dame. Uh, it's in Indiana. It's a small school you might have heard of. Um, we have been working with their College of Engineering. And so this is their main site. So when you come to the College of Engineering, you come to this site. Um, this site is actually a, a Lineage subsite of its own. Um, with, with this work, we have sort of thought out in the future that there will be other colleges joining uh, the, the website. So, so this site itself is a subsite of the main Plone site instance. Um, so in the future, we may have other colleges joining in and using the same system. Uh, so for right now, this is a, a subsite. But they also have uh, many different departments. So the first department we've uh, implemented for them is the Department of Electrical Engineering. And so within the College of Engineering, there are many departments. Um, and they all have very similar needs. So it really doesn't make sense to deploy many different Plone sites. Instead, we use Lineage to, to give them the, the things they need uh, and, and give them you know, a look and feel that it doesn't look like the main site. It's very similar, um, but we've we basically used all the uh, tools from the main site and made another site inside of that. Another thing that Notre Dame was trying to do was promote their faculty. So inside of the Department of Electrical Engineering, they have uh, a listing of uh, people who are associated with that particular department. So these people are actually, um, the, the objects actually live at the very root of the site. Um, but we're just sort of taking, uh, we're using the EEA faceted navigation and saying, I only want to see people who are in this particular department. Um, so this gives them a way to have a faculty profile that applies to all the subsites within their domain uh, quickly and easily, um, but then when you go to a specific subsite, you can actually see who's who's a part of that that particular subsite. So, not only do they have departments, but they also have what they call centers. So this is another specialization of a subsite. 
Um, I mean, it looks very similar to the other subsite. Um, you see, you know, news in the middle. Uh, we see some some uh, portlets on the side, and we have some uh, some other portlets on on this side. And it's basically the same setup, but it's it's just slightly different to to meet the needs of these centers for this particular organization. Um, I think once we you know once we get the deco story or co collective cover or whatever becomes the, the champion of, of creating layouts, then this becomes a really powerful tool because we can just quickly create a new site, change the layout of the home page or any subsequent pages, and we have a completely new site uh, for these people to use. Uh, so, so this has been a really powerful tool, um, and it's, it's, it's enabled them to really sell this technology uh, within, within their university. Um, they were they were making a homegrown uh, CMS um, in Perl or Ruby on Rails or something, um, and they kind of came to us, and we we've kind of shepherded and shepherded them into Plone, um, and I think it's 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 worked really well so far. Um, so they they have these this concept of a college, a department, and a center, and those are all lineage subsites or child sites. Um, Another organiza organization we've uh, used Lineage with is the IEEE Information Theory Society. So this is a, a very technical organization. They have, um, you know, they have a need for news and just knowing what's going on in the community. Um, but they also have events. Uh, they have conferences, much like we do. And so what they wanted to do was make their main website become the hub for all this information. But they didn't necessarily want to make a new site and have new members sign into that site and you know start that process all over again. So what they did instead was uh, use Lineage for their conference sites. So this is their main portal. Um, you know we we did the styling and everything. And this is this is an older site, so it's not Diazo or anything fancy like that. Um, but when they go to create a conference site, they just create a a new uh, lineage child site, and then they start populating with the content they need. Um, so this is very powerful for them because they can make a new sort of community each time they want to make a, a conference site. Uh, so they just they use lineage to um, sort of pull these people together, give them a place to go, um, and it's it's very easy for them. And most of these people already have accounts in the system, so. Uh, if they need to give someone uh, rights to, you know, modify, add, you know, be a manager of this particular community, they're already in the system. Um, so it's it's very powerful for them. Um, so so we've kind of seen what what lineage can do uh, in the real world, and we've we've deployed it for other other um, uh, entities as well. the The original uh, use case for lineage was. A, uh, was Duke Clinical Research. They were doing clinical trials, and they wanted to, to be able to have a, a, a sort of an internet site per clinical trial they were doing. So they were gathering data about a particular drug or a particular study, and they wanted to be able to, to have like one little uh, community just about that. So they would use Lineage for that, but then when they wanted to you know, take, a, take a higher look, they can pull all that data from the the subsites uh, up into the main site and say, you know, you know, these are the these are the current studies going on. Here's what's going on. So we really have a, a place to see what's going on in the the landscape of all these sort of little sites. Um, so it makes it very easy to to collaborate uh, between a sort of a main a main parent site and its children. So, I mean, we've we've seen how it shows up in the site, but there's a few uh, technical details to make this happen. So, when you actually install or, or activate a child site in your site, you're actually creating a new iChild site. Um, an iChild site is just a marker interface that um, is subclassing iNavigation root and iPossible site. So. I mean, much of Lineage's power is just really just two interfaces. Um, and I think that's what's, what's kind of cool about it, 
is the the I navigation route just gives us a way to when we activate this on a specific section section of our site, we have the, nav the navigation is is sort of starting fresh. Um, when you search, it's searching based on that navigation route. Um, this is something that was introduced in Plone 3.3, I believe, or 3.2-ish, 3.2, um, We had some clips in there um, and some branches to make this, this kind of happen. And lineage is sort of the, the thing that pushed it uh, a little bit further. And, and since then, it's, it's the iNavigation -navigat -I route has taken on a little bit more life and spread across some more parts of Plone. So it's, it's really easy. I mean, really, you don't even need lineage. Um, you can just go in and uh, into the ZMI, go to the Interfaces tab, mark something as an iNavigation route, and you've changed the way Plone acts for that particular folder. Uh, what Lineage does on top of that is gives you a more site-like uh, object when you, when you activate it. So that's where the, the second interface comes in. So iPossible site, that gives us a way to uh, well, iPossible site is is something that means this thing can have a component registry. Um, so this is kind of low-level details that most people probably don't need to know about. But when you're using Lineage, you've basically created something that changes the way Plone thinks about you know what the navigation is, how the search works, but also how it sort of thinks that this thing might be an actual Plone site. You know, it's it's not a Plone site. Um, but it's, it's sort of acting like one because it also has a site manager. So we can register particular tools with it. We can do, we can do some very interesting things with that. And um, we'll see that a little bit later when we look at some of the add-ons that people have created uh, for Lineage. So, so once we create a site, we have created an iChild site, um, which is really just i navigation route and i possible site. So, We've heard a little bit about what Lineage can do. There are some limitations. So to think that Lineage is going to solve all of our problems by uh, we, we, we install Lineage, we start creating some folders, and we make these folders act like independent plone sites, they're, they're pretty far from actually being independent plone sites. I mean, they're really just folders with some interfaces added to them to, to make them appear like plone sites. Um, so, so for instance, you know, if you um, if you have a set of users in your site, those users are added globally, and there's there's nothing in Lineage that's you know telling those members they cannot can or cannot be part of that community. Um, so, you know, this could be taken as a a negative or a positive. You know, as a positive, we have one central repository for users. I mean, we could use you know, something like LDAP or Active Directory, but if we don't have that uh, option, using something like Lineage makes it very easy to have one central repository of users controlled by Plone, something we understand, we know. Um, but at the same time, if you, you, know, you want to have fine-grained control over who can see the site or who can do things in the site, you kind of have to re reconfigure how you're, you know, setting up your permissions and, and take into account you, you have you know, sites inside of that site. Um, one thing we've actually run into is a problem with uh, the virtual host monster. So if we have a, a main portal site um, that is you know, www.foo.com, and then we have a child site that is uh, www.bar.com, if if the child site references the parent site, it will actually write a link that is just to that child site because it doesn't know that there's a parent site. Um, so it just thinks that anything above that is just the root of that site. Um, so if you're using it in that sort of manner, it's, it's, it can be a bit difficult. Um, We've been working on a, an add-on to, well, we're working on a branch right now of Lineage, but a way to make a series of, of sub-sites within this site uh, sort of look up to a, a dictionary map in the registry to know what the actual VHM is, and then rewrite links according to that. So 
I mean, we, we have some, some ways to get around it. Um, right now, it's still within the same domain. So you couldn't have three different domains cascading down and then links going from the bottom one up to the top one. Uh, just because it, you know, the, the VHM does not know how to, to route those, those URLs. Um, so if you're calling absolute URL or get URL on an object, it doesn't know that you have this, this level of, of, of child sites uh, going on. Um, you know, some of the other limitations we've taken care of with a few add-ons. Um, I mean, I'd say the biggest one out of the box is like having a portal title that's different than the parent. Um, because these things are set in the, the properties tool or, you know, there's things set in the registry where we're just creating something that is acting like a plone site and it's not a real plone site. So it doesn't have all that, you know, all that machinery underneath it. So that's really our biggest limitation. Um, we're just dealing with a folder. Nothing more, nothing, it's not, it's not a full plone site. Um, a, few, a few implementations in the past, uh, one called subplone, uh, which is in heavy use at uh, University of Louisville, or at least, at least it used to be, um, actually created a, a whole plone site within a plone site. Um, and I've, I've seen some other implementations where people actually just added a plone site within a plone site. And this causes the craziest things you would ever seen in your life happen. Um, so, so, you know, we don't have a full plone site, but we don't necessarily need a full plone site um, because that will cause a lot of problems we don't really need. Um, so, some of the limitations are actually good for us. Um, so, I mean, installing Lineage is pretty straightforward. It's a it's a normal Plone package. We have uh, here's the, here's the most minimal uh, config you would need. Uh, we just have Plone 4.2, uh, a Zope 2 recipe, or a Zope 2 instance, and we just add collective lineage uh, to the build out. I would prefer personally if we had a you know a policy package or something else uh, other than the build out controlling what packages are being installed, um, but that's that's another talk entirely. Um, so this is just the main, this is the, the very minimal amount of uh, code you would need to get started with Lineage. Uh, so we've seen Lineage in a full-blown uh, plone site being deployed. But here, here, is, here is just a standard <coughs> plone site. We have uh, a news and events and about us folder. Um, but you see there's a, a foobar conference folder here. If we actually go to that, that is a, uh, a lineage site. So this, this is using lineage within a stock plone site. Um, nothing extra being added in here. We're just, we've installed the product. Um, you know, we've added it to our build out or to our package. And we've installed it through the uh, quick installer. And then we, we have the ability to create new uh, subsites. So here we've created a, the, the foobar conference. And now the, the navigation has changed, and if we do a search, we won't get any, any content from the, the parent site. So that, that is the, the main uh, crux of Lineage. Um, it's really a really simple tool. Um, and I've tried to keep it that way. Uh, I've had a few uh, contributions, uh, or a few people come up to me and ask me if, if they should add something to the core of Lineage or add it, make it as an add-on. And usually, um, I would want them to create it as an add-on. Uh, so that way, if, you know, if I don't need that functionality, I don't have it. So I'm trying to keep the, the core of Lineage uh, pretty, pretty small, uh, pretty concise. I mean, there, there is a, a fair amount of code inside of Lineage, uh, but most of it is handling events and setting up the, the, the way of actually uh, creating a, a site. So let me actually go to the instance. This will be interesting. So here is a, a plone site with Lineage installed. Um, if I want to go create a new uh, Lineage site, 
I just go add new, um, add a folder. So one of the things we added in the latest version of Lineage, the latest release, it's been on the trunk or been on the head for uh, our master quite a while, uh, is the ability to do other than just folder. Um, we kind of we were kind of limited by um, P phrase subtyper. I know it's a bad word, um, but we we changed that around a little bit so we can we can subtype other things besides just a folder. Um, so we actually had to change uh, subtyper around a little bit, and we'll talk about subtyper a little bit more in the future here. Um, so call this a new site. So. I go, I go and create a folder, you know, nothing special at this point. Did I actually click save? Now I click save. Clicking save is important. Um, we have a new um, a folder here. And so when I'm going to go to make this uh, a new site, so right now we see, we see new site and all the, the previous uh, uh, content from the, the portal there. Right now, we use the subtype menu here. And so this comes from PFRA subtyper. And we click child site. And so this goes and does all the actions that turns this thing into a, a child site. So you can see the, the navigation has changed. And I'll, I'll show you how uh, these, these other folders have been created. Um, but this is our, our new uh, lineage subsite. So I mean, that's how simple lineage is. Um, and for a lot of use cases, I think this, this kind of fits. Uh, we, have, we have a need to sort of branch the site into uh, another little community, but we don't want to create a whole new clone site. Uh, we may not need to uh, do a full new development uh, or have, even have a different theme. We can just create a new uh, lineage child site, and then we, we have a place to sort of collaborate with, with, uh, with others. So from this simple idea, many add-ons have, have kind of come to fruition. And this has been a, uh, uh, an in interesting thing to see happen, uh, being an author of a product and seeing people sort of embracing it and thinking of new ways to use it. Um, some of the ways you know, I wouldn't really think about, one of them is uh, lineage.index. So we've created this notion of, of different sites within our site, but lineage doesn't really take care of you know, telling Plone at any point which site is which. I mean, once it's created, when we actually go to it, we can see the change visually. But if we try to search the content, there's nothing telling us that you know this is subsite one, this is subsite two. Uh, there's there's nothing really there to tell us. Um, so um, this this add-on was created to, to sort of fill that need. And basically, the the main thing it does is it creates a new index in the catalog called child site, and if we, uh, in the first example, if we search the catalog and we say uh, child site is subsite one. So right now it's based on ID. Um, so you, you could potentially have two child sites with the, the same ID. So that's something we will have to work out. I don't think a lot of people have that, that issue yet. Um, I mean, people aren't like wildly creating uh, child sites and they're not usually with the same name nested within many folders. So this isn't a huge problem right now, but it could, it could become a problem. Um, but for now, we're saying, you know, give me all content that is in subsite one. And when we look at uh, the first result in the brains, we can see that it is actually from uh, child or subsite one. So this is really powerful so we can change the way search works. Because um, right now, if, if I create a, a, port, a, a site at the top and then create a, a subsite within it and then create another subsite within that, when you search from the top level, it's searching for everything down because it thinks that everything that lives in this portal is everything from here down to the bottom. It doesn't have a notion of, oh, I need to stop at child site one or child site two for the content. 
So we can actually use this, this uh, lineage.index to change the way that, that Plone is, is, is searching for content. So if I'm in the uh, top level site, I'm not actually in a child site. So when it indexes that item, it actually indexes none. So that way we, we have a way to at least know that the content in the main portal is not from a child site. So we could, we could find only content from there. Um, but then if we were inside subsite one and we didn't want to search for anything, any subsites below that, uh, we could use something like this here and say child site equals uh, subsite one. So this takes a little bit of uh, you know, modifying of search templates and you know, collections and a lot of things that are out there. Um, but this, this gives us a way to, to, to actually handle that uh, in, a, in kind of a sane way. Um, we've used it on a couple sites. And we've used this in combination with advanced query. Uh, how many people have actually used advanced query in here? OK. More than actually have used Linux or, in, or uh, in, uh, lineage. Um, advanced query is a, is a sort of a, well, it's an advanced way to uh, to query the catalog. So with a catalog uh, query, normally you know here we're saying uh, I want something that is child site equals subsite and portal type equals X. Uh, advanced query gives us a way to say you know I want things that are uh, this. Or this, you know, and you can you can combine queries together, and it's it's it can get very complicated, um, but it's it is it is quite powerful, and it, it makes it more of a uh, like SQL like querying uh, that people are used to. Um, I know I've seen a few uh, uh, database admins walk up to the catalog and just doesn't quite fit their brain because they're used to being able to control everything with with SQL queries. So, advanced query gives you a little bit more uh, latitude with that. Um, and lineage index can can help also. Um, one that uh, Jens Klein actually created, and he and Jens Klein has has done quite a bit of work on the uh, the core of Linux or Linux. I keep calling it Linux, lineage dot index or lineage. Um, he uh, he made this 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 one add on called uh, lineage dot registry, so you can actually have a registry for your uh, lineage site. So when you have this product installed, you create a new uh, uh, subsite or child site. It actually creates a new uh, registry um, inside of your uh, lineage um, site. And then, you know, if you haven't set an, a value inside of your local one, it looks up to the parent and grabs that value. So you could actually, you know, be very nested. And it could look up each time and try to find the value um, that it, it actually will uh, apply. Um, I ran into a few, itch, few issues um, trying to test this out. When I deactivated the lineage site, there were some issues with the removal of the uh, registry um, and gave me some errors. Um, but it seemed to work, and it didn't have much of a UI uh, right now. So this is sort of a uh, sort of an idea, uh, you know, pushing something forward so we can actually have more of a, a, a an autonomous uh, clone site using Lineage. Um, I actually created a another uh, product called Lineage Proxy Props, uh, which uses a product called Collective Proxy Properties. Um, I was very ambitious, I guess, with this. Uh, I think they're both in zero one alpha, uh, so do not use them. Um, but I would tell you about them uh, just in case you really wanted to. Um, lineage proxy props is basically the same thing as lineage registry, but for the properties tool. Um, so this does some heinous things to intercept calls to anything going to portal properties. Um, that includes things like base properties and some other ugly things. So I wrote the code. Uh, it works, uh, but please don't look at it or uh, you know talk to me about it. Uh, it's kind of a, a thing in my past. I don't really want to talk about. Um, but it's the same idea as uh, lineage registry. So my hope is that we move all settings from portal properties and you know all those all those property sheets inside of there into the registry, so I don't have to update this product and we can just use the other product. So fingers crossed. 
I hope that happens. Um, we we actually implemented this for um, for for basically one reason. I think well, there's two um, to change the portal title for a, for a, a site within a site and to change. I think something in the base properties like the logo name or something silly like that. Um, so you know, typical Plone problems, um, solving them with with crazy code. Um, but it works for now. Um, but be warned, it is 0 0.1 alpha. Can change in any mo moment. Uh, I promise nothing. Um, Another cool add-on has uh, propped up in its lineage.theme selection. So another one from Jens Klein. He made it so that you can actually apply a different theme to each lineage subsite. So I think this is pretty huge uh, for lineage. Um, something you know I was thinking about, but I was thinking more about from uh, you know changing a rules file and saying at this path do this or at this path do something else. He went a step further and gave a whole theming uh, config panel uh, per lineage site. So here we've created a new uh, lineage site called theme one. Uh, we enable the theme and select it. Then we, when we go to that particular site, it has the Diazo theme applied. So we can go a bit further. We can have a uh, second uh, theme uh, site. So we have theme two. So this is another object in the site. We enable theming, select a different theme, and we see a different theme. So this is, I think this is really cool. Um, it gives you a lot of power, especially with Diazo templates. Um, I, just, I just stole a couple of Diazo templates off of PyPy. The one thing that these are missing are the uh, child site selector. So they're not aware of this, this viewlet, um, but it's a viewlet. Viewlets suck. Anyway. Hmm? OK, thank you. Um, so we've seen some add-ons. Uh, I want to talk about a, f a couple other little uh, features inside of Lineage. Uh, one is events. So to actually create the uh, site, some of the sites we saw in the, in the first couple slides, we, we created some dexterity types. Um, and I think we actually created a uh, dexterity behavior for Lineage. Um, I probably should factor that out and make it available so you can just throw, throw the uh, uh, Lineage behavior on a dexterity item. So that gives you even further uh, uh, possibilities. Um, but for right now, that's still, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. It just adds the, the, the iChild site um, in the end. Um, so then when you go to create a new site, it'll fire all the same events that you would get with, with an archetype or, uh, well, I guess with a folder, you know, anything in the, the stock plan right now. Um, there are two events right now. So iChild site created event and iChild site removed event. Um, I think it's pretty obvious what those do. Um, when you create a site, obviously one fires. When you remove the site, another one fires. I have, in, in preparing for this talk, I was playing around with all these add-ons, which I hadn't really had much time to play around with. And I realized that uh, one of the bugs in Lineage Registry needed to uh, act on the, the, the sub-site before uh, the everything had been torn down, um, so it was trying to remove its uh, uh, registry of the or it, its uh, registration of a local registry. Uh, but by the time it had received the event, I had already torn down all the uh, site manager and everything, so it had no idea that that actually existed. So yesterday, while sitting in another talk, I I created these two events uh, in a branch on Lineage, and I will be. Uh, pushing those soon, so we'll have a couple more events we can we can use. Um, an example of using one of the events. So earlier we we saw creating a new um, lineage child site. We can actually tie into that with the uh, i child site created event. 
So if I tie that event to or that subscriber to this this method here, I can actually do some things once we go to create a new uh, lineage site. So in this case, um, I'm pretending that all new child sites are just conferences. Um, one thing you would have to do here is if you had different types of child sites, is mark them with some sort of interface or do something so that you could you know, do an if statement here and saying, if this is this type of thing, do this. So in, in this case, I'm just assuming all child sites we're creating are, are conference sites. So what I'm doing is uh, hiding the, the child site from the navigation uh, because it still shows up in the nav, uh, re-indexing it so it, it catches that, and then just creating some folders. So assuming every time we create a new conference, we need a talks folder, we need a speakers folder, and we need an about folder. Um, so I actually was, was coding this up using invoke factory and process form and tearing my hair out and refactoring and then I realized I should go try out Plone.API. And wow, Plone.API is awesome. So it lives up to the hype for me because um, I was able to just do one uh, call to create content where normally this would have been two or three uh, statements in my uh, uh, subscribers. So a little plug there for Plone API. Um, I know it's still not stable, um, but I think, you know, after having done this, I think it's a, it's a, good, it's a good chance to, to go try it out and see what it can do. Um, I just wondered what this method actually did. I was like, I wonder if Plone API can do this. And it did very gracefully, and I was quite impressed. Um, so, so when we go to create our, uh, our new child site, it actually does all these actions. So if we look at that in action, So if I go back up to the Plone site, and then add a new folder, and we'll just call it foo. So right now foo is just a folder. It's boring. It doesn't have anything inside of it. But when, you act, when we activate the child site, we can see that the, the three folders were created. And if we go back up to the root, we won't see uh, this folder in the, in the nav anymore. So it's, that's a pretty powerful feature, I think, um, in Linean, just the ability to um, act on a new site being created or a new, a new site being destroyed or an old site being destroyed. Uh, and I'm almost out of time. Um, just a little bit about the future. Uh, I mentioned P for A subtyper. And you heard me correct, that was P4A uh, subtyper. Um, we are planning to remove that, um, to tear that out, uh, to the remo remove the stigma of the P4A. Um, so we will be doing that and replacing it with, with something. Jens Kleiner actually, already actually wrote it all up in a bunch of gists. Um, so the, the power of GitHub is, is very strong. Um, we. We have some uh, other tickets in the tracker. Uh, one thing we did, or one thing actually Jens Klein did, um, was move this project into GitHub, uh, which if you have any projects in the collective or in SVN anywhere and you're hiding them, put them on GitHub. They will get, immediately, they, they will get immediate attention um, and people will actually start fixing things. Um, I, moved, I moved the bugs over from Poi into, into GitHub. Things just started magically being fixed. Uh, best day of my life. Um, so I'm moving everything I own into, the, into GitHub uh, in hopes that you will all fix my issues. Um, so I have a few links and I'll, I'll, I'll post these on SlideShare. Um, photos courtesy of uh, Creative Commons. And do I have a minute for questions? So any questions? Roche? Uh, I mean, it's so the question is if you create a, a lineage site 
and you have member folder creation, member folders are still created at the root level. Um, that's actually one of the problems we ran into with the, the Notre Dame site. Um, we skirted around the issue for now um, to look at later. Um, I, think, I think there could be some clever traversal hacks to make that work, um, but that's not something we have, have tried to tackle yet. Any other questions? Yep. So the the question is about the VHM mapping between a, a parent site and a child site. We we're actually doing that with the Notre Dame site. So if we go back all the way to the beginning, so here this is actually ee.nd.edu. Um, we're working on making so that anything .nd.edu will be aware of what are the other sites within that. Um, so it, it actually, it ended up being a monkey patch of uh, git URL and absolute URL, I believe. So there's some some kind of weird things we have to do to, move, to look up those uh, paths um, within those methods. Um, so that was not an easy uh, problem to solve. Um, we are planning to release it as lineage.vhm. Um, but right now, it's in a, it's, if you want to see it now, it's in a branch of lineage uh, called VHM mapping, I think. You showed uh, the back of the, yeah, the back of the directory. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So, uh, question is, how does the the staff directory work on a, a subsite? So here we have uh, members showing up from the root, uh, but in this related to this particular department. What we end up doing was when we create the uh, uh, child site, we actually set up the uh, faceted nav, and then we just we check the box for, uh, I want to see only people in the Department of Electrical Engineering. So really, if you just uncheck that box, then you see everything. So you still see all the members. Um, so that's sort of the way we, we handled that. So that was one of those hooks we used to make sure that when, when, when they go to create a new site, everything's sort of set up in the way they would expect. If you, um, yeah, so, so the question is, uh, what, what is the replacement for p phrase subtyper? I don't think there is a particular one. I think everyone's rolling their own, um, which is something I don't like. I mean, I think, I think p phrase subtyper is, is not too bad. There is some heinous stuff going on in there, but it could potentially be changed a little bit. But as soon as someone sees that name, it's, it's over. So um, if you actually go to the issue tracker, on GitHub and go to the issue about that, about removing it, you can see the gists uh, the Jens Klein made, and he, he sort of had a little outline of how to do that. So question is how why do we decide to 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 mark a folder instead of just creating a new uh, folder type right um, well lineage zero to one actually did have a child folder type um, but it wasn't very flexible so if you needed to to turn it off or you know do something more to it or change the type of that folder you were pretty limited in what you could do um, I sort of like the this the subtyper approach more. Because you can walk up to any folder, even if it already exists, and say, this is a child site. Um, or if, if it was there, you could actually turn it off. Um, and then there's no, 
the, the, the folder itself never changes. Um, I, I, I felt it was a pretty severely limiting uh, uh, part of lineage 0 0.1, so that's why we kind of went the other way. Yeah. Well, actually, the, the the lineage proxy props actually uses the um, notion of uh, tools as utilities to actually work. Um, if it if get tool by name did not look up things by uh, interface, that thing wouldn't work at all. Um, so we are I mean that particular thing, and I think the registry itself also sort of takes that into, uh, into account. Because when you're doing a, a get tool by name on portal registry, it's actually, in the end, looking up iRegistry on the site manager. Um, so we're, we're taking advantage of a little bit of that. But past that, I haven't, I haven't looked into it. Uh, so the question is about uh, the caching of objects within each site. Um, that's something I haven't had a chance to look into. So that's not something we've run into. So I, I, I don't have any, uh, any ways to fix it. And I assume, am I done? Yeah, OK. So all right. Thank you very much.